jump start is more of a jump startle as we kick off your spooky season. We are learning about some of Chicago's haunted history. Our Jackie Kostek is in Lincoln Park right now at the first stop of today's ghost tour. Hey, Jackie. Dana, good morning to you. Yeah, I think even if you've lived in Chicago your entire life, there's a lot of history that you may not know. Spooky history, especially here in Lincoln Park. So we are just uh, east of Clark and LaSalle, just south of North Avenue uh, and just across the street from the Chicago History Museum. They actually own what is right behind us, which is the couch tomb. I'm here with Tony Zabelski this morning, who is a historian and paranormal investigator. Tony, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, so uh, briefly describe the history of the structure behind us. And I know it's hard to do it briefly, yeah. but tell us what we need to know. I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> um, the Couch family was a wealthy family that owned a hotel downtown in the theater district of the city called the Tremont House. Okay. In 1857, Ira Couch was traveling with his family on vacation in Cuba when he died. His brother, commissioned this to be built one year later in 1858 at a cost of $7,000, uh, which would be equal to just under $300,000 in today's money. The great mystery surrounding this structure these many years later is after Lincoln Park um, became, stopped being a cemetery, and it wasn't even called Lincoln Park, it was called City Cemetery back then, uh, from about 1843 to the 1860s. but. In the mid 1860s, they supposedly started moving the bodies to other cemeteries, Graceland, Rose Hill, Oakwoods, Calvary. Um, why they left this one here, no one knows. Huh. It's kind of an unknown mystery as to why it was left here. But it could have been in part because of the weight of it, 50 tons? 50 tons, that yeah. had probably a lot to do with it. There was a, a cost of $3,000 to move it, which the city would have had to pay for that cost. So they probably just thought it's cheaper to keep it here. <laughs> Chicago being Chicago. Exactly. Yeah. Even, even in the you know 1800s, it was still Chicago. And, and when you talk about sort of the haunted history or the, the paranormal activity, it involves a uh, one of the people who may or may not be in here, who may right. or may not have been tied in right. some way to Ira Couch, correct? I exactly. There, There is a lot of mystery as to who's in here. We know Ira Couch was put in here and a po possibly a couple of his young brothers uh, that died at a young age. Uh, but what's still in here now, we don't know. In 1901, the last time we know this was open, uh, a guy said he saw nothing in it, a guy who worked for the park. But Ira Couch's grandson said there should be seven bodies in here, with that being Ira and his wife, Ira's parents, uh, these two brothers that died young, and an unknown woman who died in their hotel. And we have no idea how that woman died. No, no idea who that woman is or how she died or why they even put her in here in a family mausoleum that you spend $7,000 on. Woo! Okay, interest is peaked. Tony, really, really quick, how can people find your tours, your walking tours and your bus tours? Chicago Hauntings, American Ghost Walks. Okay, this is the time to take them because the weather is beautiful, the spooky season is in full effect, and there's so much history that you just may not know in and around Lincoln Park. Dana, back to you. You know, Jackie, I took a tour last year. I'd wanted to do it for decades, and I didn't know until last year anything about that, that tomb, but also that that whole park area used to be a cemetery. Isn't that crazy? Crazy? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you knew exactly. that, but I didn't. Yes, and you know, I feel like I had known it at one point, but it's one of those uh, Chicago facts that you just sort of forget. <laughs> um, and so, and actually next hour, Dana, we're going to be going uh, sort of under this underpass and to Potter Field, which was also part of that cemetery back in the day. And there's a, there's a real story attached to that. So we'll see you next hour. All right. Fascinating stuff, Jackie. Thank you so much. Again, for tickets and more information about the different tours they offer, head to AmericanGhostWalks.com. And Tony has been showing us some of Chicago's creepy oh past for years now. For more on Tony's tales, go to our website, cbschicago.com, and search Chicago Hauntings, and be on the lookout for three new stories coming soon. Into the spirit by going on a ghost tour for today's Jump Start, or as our producer Blake says, our Jump Startle. Oh, that's a good one. We're checking in out some of Chicago's most haunted sites with Chicago Haunting Ghost Tours. Jackie Kostek is on the job live in Lincoln Park with a look at some of the eerie spots. Hey, Jackie. 
Hey, good morning, ladies. Yeah, we've moved our way up Clark Street, and now we are not in Lincoln Park itself, but still in the neighborhood of Lincoln Park, and we are basically at the location of the Valentine's Day massacre. But I want to ask Tony really quick because we were just uh, in Potter's Field, where the softball fields are uh, in Lincoln Park, the actual park itself, a little bit ago. And I want to ask you what, real quick, what the sort of paranormal activity or what people have spotted around there is before we get to Valentine's Day massacre. Well, people have seen um, men in uniform, like old. Civil War uniforms roaming those fields. Uh, plus there's a bunch of divots throughout the park and uh, people have experienced weird things around those divots. Uh, it's possible those are sunken down graves from when it was a cemetery. Uh, on the ghost tour I give out some meters and sometimes our little meters are uh, electrical meters that pick up on energy get readings around these divots. Huh. That is fascinating. Okay, so now you maybe understand a little bit more if you walk on like a little sinkhole or something, might be over a, a, a casket. Be. Very well, might Fascinating. Be. Okay, describe to me where we are now. We're basically right, right across the street from Chicago Pizza and Oven Grind. Right, yeah, Clark Street between uh, Webster and Dickens. Uh, this was where the little garage was at 2122 North Clark of uh, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Uh, Al Capone and a guy named Bugs Moran are in a bitter war with each other. Uh, Al Capone runs the south side of the city, alcohol wars. Uh, Bugs Moran is in charge of the north side, but they are going back and forth throughout the 1920s, killing each other. On Valentine's morning, Valentine's morning in 1929, seven members, well, six members of the Bugs Moran gang and a 29-year-old optometrist who just liked to hang out with gangsters were hanging around this garage waiting for their boss, Bugs Moran, to come, also waiting for a shipment of whiskey coming from Canada where it was still extremely legal to produce when a police car pulls up in front of the garage uh, with two men in it wearing Chicago police uniforms in the front seat they get out of the car they go in the front door of this garage uh, two other men sitting in the back seat wearing regular clothing they get out of the car they go around back um, the men in the garage see what they believe policemen coming in there they probably think it's just going to be a routine liquor raid they are lined up against the back wall and at that point the men took out the tommy guns and just blew those men to pieces Okay, well, if you want the rest of that story and the paranormal activity, you have to come out and spend a day with Tony. He uh, does a bunch of different walking tours. I know you guys have other information as well. Back to you. <laughs> thank yep, you this Jackie. is what it looked like back in the day. Thank, oh, thank you. For